Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over getting a list of devices from the Netbox API and um, using some Python to parse that information. So the first thing we're going to want to do in our Netbox is go to your profile and make sure that you have an API token. Uh, in this case, I already have one, but if you don't have one, obviously you could just click add a token here. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to copy the token data because we are going to need it later. Now we can go into the API documentation for Netbox. And it does take a minute to load. Okay. So the first thing we can note here is we have the base URL. And then as we scroll down, we can look at the path for what we want to use. So in our case, we're going to go under DCIM because we're looking for devices. So we're starting to see some device things. We have device roles, device types, but we actually just want to get a list of devices. Now, obviously, as you can see, there's tons of stuff we could do with the API, but we're going to be pretty simple and we're going to do get devices. So if you click on get, it'll show you um, a bunch of parameters that you can put in. Uh, there's a lot as we keep scrolling down. Um, we can see a model for, um, you know, an example, and here's an example value. And we do know that the response content type is application JSON, which again is important. So to show you what we're going to do, let's open up Postman. Um, what we're going to do is create a new request. And we're going to call it uh, get devices. And we have to select the collection. I don't actually have a collection yet, so we're going to call this netbox. And save the netbox. Now, if we go under collections, you can see we have netbox and get devices. Uh, this is good, so you can, you really only have to, you know, create a uh, API request one time save it and then you can keep coming back to it later. Uh, so what we're going to do here is remember the URL, which let me scroll back up, is going to be http colon slash slash 192.168.174.128 port 800 slash API. I mean, sorry, 8,000 slash API. Now, you can kind of see my autofill already, already filling, but that's okay. We want to go down to devices, which is where we were. And to complete the rest of the path, we'll do DCIM devices. Cool. Now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to edit the headers of the request. So the first thing we're going to need to do is set the content type. And this, like we saw before, application JSON. The other thing we're going to do is have to do authorization. And here's where we put in our token. Token space token. So I know it kind of seemed like I was just throwing random information at you to start, but it's because we, we really need these two pieces of information plus the total path for the URI um, to complete this get request. So now pretty easy. All I have to do is send the request and you can see down here we have tons of data. Um, and these are all my devices, which we're not going to really care about going through this right now. But what I want to show you is over here, we have code and I already have it set to Python, but you can, you know, if you just want to use curl or, you know, I don't know, uh, PowerShell, there's, there's a, tons of other options, but I'm going to use Python requests because Python is the language that I, I know. And, and Python is really the, the popular networking language. So I'm going to copy this code, go into visual studio or Visual Studio Code, I should say. Let's create a new file, and we'll paste that in. 
So I'm going to change the language to Python here just so you can kind of have a little prettier view. And what we'll do is we'll save it. And I will save it as netbox underscore API dot pi. Okay, cool. Now what we can do is let's bring up a command prompt. Um, sorry, I computer just Okay. And what we're going to do is change it again. I have a folder here. Okay. So in my folder, I have my netbox.api. So let's go ahead, netbox API, and print. Now you can see this gives us some really ugly data. It's just a giant text dump, um, almost, almost useless to us. Um, so what I want to do is walk through how to actually parse this and make this readable to us. Um, the first thing I want to do is we're going to import JSON, the JSON module into uh, Python. This is going to allow us to take this response that we get and let's go ahead and create a variable json data equals response json so this turns this response into a json uh, uh excuse me a json object so what does that mean well let's open up idle and what i'll do is let me pause the video and I'll type this all in so that we can have a live look at what's going on with this information. Okay, so you can see I pretty much just copied it word for word into idle. So the first thing let's do is let's take a look at type for response. And you can see that the, the object is class, request, models, response, and that just kind of gives us that big blob of text. But if we do type JSON data, we can see that that is a, class, a Python dictionary. Now, this is going to be good for us because we can actually do things in Python to interact with the dictionary. Um, one of the things that we can do is if we go back into Postman, we could take a look at some of the key value pairs. So the first one is count, the next one is next, we have previous, and then we have results. And it looks like all of our devices hang out in the results key. So what we can do is let's take a look at JSON underscore data results. And you can see idle doesn't want to print out all the um, all the data there but if you look we can start to see we have data ID and we can start going through with now all of our all of our routers and, and switches are there now what we could do is let's take a look at all the different well let's let's take a look at the first one we want to take a look at the very first device that comes back in results. So what we do is let's just copy and paste this. And let's do zero. So the way that dictionaries in Python work is, is that the first value is actually zero. It's not one. If you did JSON data underscore or JSON underscore data results one, it would print out the second device. So we can see that the first device, here's all the information that came back from the API. And so we have an identifier, name, display name, device type, and we have a bunch of information about the device type. We have the model, you know, tons of information here. So 
Let's try to narrow this down further. Um, because what we well, basically what we want to do is is let's try to just simply get the name of the device and the primary IP address of the device. So let's create, so we, we know that the, the name is R1 from here. So let's just call a variable R1 and we'll say that this value is here, is results zero. Okay, so now if we just take a look at R1, we can see it's that same information. Perfect. So now what we want to do is let's just print the name from R1. So R1, again, we'll bracket. Let's print name. There we go. The name is R1. What about R1? Um, primary underscore IP. Okay, so it gives us another dictionary. So we can see we have a nested dictionary with some more key value pairs. This one has ID, the URL, um, the family, and then we have the address here, which has our IP address. So in order to print the IP address, we could do R1, sorry, primary IP, and then let's just print the address. 10.22.101 slash 24. Perfect. So what does this do for us? Well, doing this in idle, it kind of does nothing, but we could use some Python logic. So let's go ahead and get rid of this print statement because we don't want to print out that ugly blob. Let's go ahead and do results equals JSON underscore data. And we just want the results. Because remember that was one of the first key value pairs. So when we went up here in idle, and we just looked at the JSON data results, we saw all of our devices. So we want to go for each device that's in results, we want to get its name and IP address. So for that, we're going to use a for loop and you can name your variable, whatever you want, but I'm going to call it a device because I think that makes sense to me in results. And again, results is the variable that I just created for the key results in the JSON data. So now in the loop, let's create a variable called host name. And it's going to be device name. This isn't doing anything complicated. This is exactly what we did before in idle when we had R1 name. It was R1. So host name should equal R1 and or the next device R2, R3, R4, etc. Let's also do IP adder. Um, that should be the name of the variable I want. And we'll do device primary IP. And then we'll also, under the primary IP, we'll do address. Because remember, the primary IP address here is another dictionary. And within that dictionary, there's a key address, which should give us our address. And now all we'll do is print uh, let's say the IP address of hostname is IP adder. Okay, so what this should do is take a look at results, go device by device, and loop through them. And for each one, it'll print out the host name and the IP address in a sentence. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back to our command prompt. Let's run the script again. And here we go. 
the IP address of R1 is 10.2.2.1.0.1, R2 is 1.0.2, R3, 1.0.4, etc., etc., etc. So this is a super simple uh, script that literally just we call the API, we parse the data, and print out the host name and IP address. But you could already see that if, if you're using a tool like Nornir, Ansible, whatever, um, it's really easy to just call the API, get the data, and say, you know, hey, like, I just want to connect to R1's IP address. Well, we can get the IP address of R1 and then use that in another script to connect to. Or what we could do is in this for loop, we could even start doing more things like, you know, this is just going to be pseudocode, but we could say connect to device, run commands on device, print output with results of commands. Um, and it would do that for each device. And we could use the IP address as something to connect to. Um, so hopefully this video was pretty, pretty clear. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And we'll see you on the next one.